Hello and welcome. You are looking at a review on area, uh, straight up for polygons um, and for circles and parts of circles and such. Pre-apologize for any coughing I do. Uh, as you know, the voice has been bad and it probably sound a little different as well. So apologize in advance. Try and go as quickly as possible because of that. Okay, our first five problems are all vocab based. I'm just trying to determine what the correct term is in each of these. Um, you can use any side as the altitude or base of a triangle. The answer is base. Um, the idea here is that you have a triangle, and I'm just going to go ahead and draw one here. You have a triangle, and the area for a triangle is one half base times height. Now, the idea behind that is that um, one of these sides can be determined as your base length. Your height is not necessarily one of these sides. Your height is always perpendicular to your base that you choose. So the easy one to see in this case is right here. This would be base down here, the whole thing. And then height would be up here. And the area is 1 half base times height. Now in another scenario, if I choose the base as, say, this side right here, okay, the height is perpendicular to it. So it's any portion. And I'm not saying this is perpendicular but let's pretend like it was. Okay, that's the height. And it's not, um, it's the tallest part of the triangle, how high it actually goes up to. So it goes up to there. So it's not like, okay, this is the height. I know that's perpendicular, but at the same time, it's not like this is the height either for it. So that's kind of the idea behind it. The height is a virtual length. The base is actually one of the side lengths. Okay, a sector or segment of a circle is a region bounded by two radii in the intercepted arc. This one's called the sector. Um, we haven't really used the term intercepted arc yet. Um, it's just an arc, really, just hit from two points. Um, drawn from the center. Okay, if this is a point, here's a point, and here are two radii. Whoops. Here and here. Here's the intercepted arc. And this is the sector. It's the um, pizza slice. The segment is the pizza crust. So the segment looks like the segment that's drawn between those two points right there. Boom. Okay. Um, a segment that contains the center of a circle and has both endpoints on the circle is the diameter or circumference of a circle. So this is going to be diameter. So here's your center. If two points, uh, if a segment goes through the center and it hits two endpoints of the circle, that length is indeed called the diameter. Looks like that. Okay, circumference is the distance around the circle, adding up or not. Excuse me. It's like perimeter, where you add up the lengths of the sides of a polygon, but in this case, you can't add up any sides. That would be called circumference. But this one here is the diameter. In a number four in a regular polygon, the perpendicular distance from the center to a side is called the blank of the parallelogram. Parallelogram. I don't. Parallelogram. This look. <laughs> this looks like it should say polygon. I don't know how this says parallelogram. I, the book has a typo. That's interesting. Unless I'm reading it wrong. Um, polygon. So let me just put out a shape. Okay, nine-sided shape like this one. Uh, what it's talking about. Any regular polygon here has a center. One right in the middle, right there. When it goes from center to a vertex, that's called the radius. But when it goes from center to a side, boom, right there, that's called the apothem. So this one here in the regular polygon, it's uh, the apothem because it's the perpendicular one. Now, what's actually interesting about this is that the apothem is the shortest distance from center to any point on your regular polygon. The radius is the longest distance from center to any regular point on a polygon. Uh, even though they don't look that different because they're probably not all that different. But that's the difference in the distances. Okay, two arcs of a circle with exactly one point in common. Uh, those are called adjacent arcs, nothing that you really need to know anything about. But there you go. There's arcs that neighbor each other because they both have one of the points. But like I said, I'm just going to move on. Find the area of each figure. If your figure is not an integer, leave it in simplest radical form. we Will do. Okay, so right here we have a triangle. I don't have to know whether or not it's isosceles. All I need to know is the base length and the height length. Perfect. Area of any triangle. It's one half base times height. 
And as we just established before, the base has to be one of your sides. So let's choose this one because we know the length. And the height is also perpendicular to it, which we also know. So 1 half, 4 times 5, is half of 20, which is 10 square meters. Um, the units were meters for the lengths, and when you multiply meters by meters, you get meters squared, or as we say, square meters. And that's your area. That is the inside fill of this triangle right there. Okay, number seven. This is a parallelogram because by definition, opposite sides are parallel. And there we go. The area of a parallelogram is base times height. And we just established how height works. It must be perpendicular to your base. So we have a base length of nine. This is parallel to this one, and this is a right angle. Therefore, this is also a right angle. And in a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. So this is also nine. So either or. Here's your base. Here's your height. Um, Area of a rectangle is the same thing, as we know. So um, a parallelogram is just a distorted rectangle, in a way. Uh, this is 90 square inches, like so. And already as I'm talking, my throat's already kind of hurting, so, you know, apologize for all this here. Okay, here's another triangle. Uh, we're not looking for the area of this. We're looking for the area of just that shade, <laughs> excuse me, the figure itself, this triangle right here. Um, this is drawn right here because it's trying to tell you how tall this triangle is. Okay, when I laid it down, or when it was laid down right here, that doesn't negate the fact that it's still that tall, no matter where I go. Um, this is this just happens to be a perpendicular portion to that tip. So this is all six feet, any of that right there. Um, so the base is 11, height is six, pretty straightforward, one half, 11 times six. Half of 66 is 33, and that's square feet. All's good. Six, seven, and eight. All right. Number nine. Now we're looking at a trapezoid. And every so often it looks like you're going to be seeing some pencil marks. They're not mine, but they're somebody's. Uh, this is from a scan. Find the area of each figure. Yada, yada. All right. So here we got a trapezoid. Uh, not necessarily isosceles. I don't think that matters. But it looks like someone wrote a 30 here for good reason. If this is 60, and this appears to be 90, right there, and this one's going to be 30. All right, we have 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, what will this be used for? That is a good question. Um, <clears throat> okay, well, I have two issues here. First of all, I don't know whether this is 15 or the whole thing is 15. I'm guessing it's just this part. Uh, now that I've made that guess very nicely and clearly. Um, what we need to find is this height. Okay. That's going to be worked on from the 30, 60, 90 triangle here. Now, all 30, 60, 90 triangles have a special relationship going on with them in terms of the ratios of the sides. If the side opposite 30 was 1 or any value, we'll just use a unit, uh, the hypotenuse would be 2, which means the hypotenuse is twice as large, twice as long as the shortest side. The side opposite 60 is root 3, or in this case, root 3 times larger than the shortest side right here. So if the shortest side opposite 30 here is 6 millimeters, this side, this leg opposite of 60, will be root 3 times larger. So it's going to be 6 root 3 millimeters. Okay. Now my guess is that this 15 is representing just this one portion right here. I sure hope it is, and I might be wrong. Um, I'm not looking at a teacher edition answer booklet here either. Um, so we'll have to make do. Now the area of a trapezoid is as follows. You take the, uh, you average out your bases, and then you multiply it by its height. Okay, so it's like a rectangle that basically would look like this, right here. Okay, and you're like finding that area of that rectangle. When you average out your bases, notice how you can just find the length between, you know what I mean. So it's like base times height, only these bases are different, so we're going to average them out. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add 6 and 15 to get 21 millimeters here total. Okay, again, I'm not positive that that's what, that's 15, but let's say it is. So let's take, let's average out 11 and 21, which should be 16. And we're going to multiply that by the height of 6 root 3. Height, is, of course, is still perpendicular to your bases. You have two bases in this case. Half of 32 is 16, as I said before. So we got 16 times 6 root 3. Uh, 96 root 3, I think. Square millimeters. OK, 
Okay. Let's move some of this stuff over. Okay, uh, number 10 here. Um, it's a parallelogram, okay? And in a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. Now, this one has two tick marks here, so let's put this one with two tick marks. This one has two tick marks here, so let's put this one with two tick marks. All of them with two tick marks. And that means one thing there it must be a rhombus. Uh, it could have been a square if these were right angles, but we don't know anything about that. Another thing to help you out knowing that this is a rhombus is that um, the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. A parallelogram with diagonals perpendicular to each other does make it a rhombus as well. Now, to find the area of a rhombus, you could do it like area of parallelogram. You could do base times height. Problem with this is, I have no idea what this height is, and I have no angle measures to make that determination. So there's another way to do area of rhombus, which is also like doing area of a kite. Okay, What you do is you multiply your two diagonal lengths together, the total amount, <clears throat> Okay, and then you take half of that whole area. Um, I'm not going to personally explain why right now. Um, you have gotten that explanation before. But that and the kite have the same thing. Maybe if we run into a kite, oh, here's a kite. Maybe if we run into a vertical looking kite, I'll show you. Um, okay, so the length of one of the diagonals here is 16 feet. Okay. The other one looks very unknown to us. No idea what it is. Okay, but they drop you a little bit of a hint here by using the whole right angle rhombus idea. This right here is a right triangle. Okay, and in this right triangle, 10 is the hypotenuse. Okay, it's opposite the right angle right there. So <clears throat> this is actually one of those three, four, five special triangles. You can do Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to avoid it. I know this is six. Six to eight to 10 is the same as three to four to five. So I know this length here is six, and in a rhombus diagonals bisect each other, so this one's also six, which makes the entire length of this one right here, 12 feet. Okay. So the area of the entire rhombus is going to be half um, 16 times 12. 16 times 12, I actually don't know off the top of my head. I'm sure I could figure it out. But I'm going to take half of, uh, let's take half of 16, that's 8. And I know 8 times 12 is 96. Pretty good there. And that's square feet. I always leave units, of course. And there you are. Okay, this next one is a kite. The uh, reason I know that is because one diagonal is perpendicular to the other. Um, and then <clears throat> the one diagonal, or I'm sorry, they're all perpendicular. One diagonal bisects the other as they're perpendicular. It's just one of the properties of your kite here. So these are both 6.5 centimeters, which makes your entire diagonal right here 13 centimeters. This one's 10 plus 8, which makes that 18. Kite is the same thing as rhombus right there. 1 half d1 times d2. So half of 18 times 13 will be half of um, half of 18 is 9. So 9 times 13 gives you, oh boy, 117 square centimeters. Okay? That's good. Okay, we got, um, now we have regular polygons, and you will be given a radius, and then we have to find its area. They do ask us to round our answer to the nearest tenth. I have a calculator with me, so I'll be ready to go. Um, I just got to do some number crunches when we do it. So I'll draw it here, based on what we have. Here's a regular triangle. It's also called an equilateral triangle. The radius is four inches. Now, we mentioned that radius is distance from center to any vertex. I like to use the bottom ones. It's just easiest to look at for me. Also, when we draw the right angles, or the apothem, it's going to be useful. So radius of 4 inches, so both of these are 4 inches long. Okay. Now, the way that we find the area of this triangle, I'm sure there are multiple ways because it's a triangle. We could find the height. There's actually a relationship that I did discover. But I'll do, the, I'll do two ideas. I want to find the area of this triangle, and then I'll triple it because the idea if this is the third radius, there are three of these types of triangles all congruent. Or you can do the exact same thing, but perception is different. Use the formula for the area of a regular polygon. It's one half AP, where the little a represents the apothem and P represents the perimeter of the triangle. So far we have neither of those things. Okay, But it's gonna be found by drawing an apothem to begin with. Reason being, it's also the height of this triangle. So it's still important to have. 
So um, we still need a little bit more information here. We need to know something about an angle measure. Uh, you can get an interior angle measure because it's a regular triangle, an equilateral triangle. They're all 60 degrees. And if you didn't know this already, the radius does bisect each angle, which means if this was all 60, half of that is 30. So this is 30 degrees. But how do I normally do this? I normally go by the central angle of the, uh, just right here. Central angles, there are three of them, one, two, three, they're all at 360, they're all congruent. So that does make any one of them 120 degrees, 360 divided by three. Okay. If a full one is 120, the apothem does indeed bisect your central angle. So 120 divided by two is 60. So you are looking at a 30, 60, 90 triangle within here. Um, I think that's the point of all of these problems right here. We gotta find the apothem and we're given a radius of four inches right here. And we have the 60 and the 30. Okay, so opposite 30 will be half the length of the hypotenuse. So in this right triangle here, the apothem has length of two inches. One of the side lengths, like this one right here, the side opposite 60 is root three times larger than the shortest side, so it's two root three inches. Now that's just for this part right here, not for the full thing. As the apothem bisects the central angle, it also bisects the side, the length of one of my sides. So if that one part's two root three, you double it, it's four root three. Okay, so within the triangle, just this one triangle right here, I do have the base length of four root three inches, and a height, the apothem here, of two inches. So you could find the area of just one of these triangles. And I'm only gonna do this this one time. I'm not gonna do it for the other ones, unfortunately. Uh, one half base times height. Okay, that becomes four root three square inches. So that's the area of one of the triangles. Three of the triangles are the area of big triangle. Of, those, of these three triangles multiplied together, three times four root three. And that becomes 12 root three square inches. Okay, so that's one way of doing this problem. Another way of doing this problem, like I said, is using area equals one half AP. So let's do that same thing. We already have the apothem now, it's two inches. Perimeter, we have to take four root three and we have to triple that number. Four root three plus four root three plus four root three becomes 12 root three. So perimeter is 12 root three inches. So the area is one half, um, what was it, two? A, P. Two times 12 is 24, half of 24 is 12. So you get 12 root three square inches once again. So one half AP, and again, this formula, when we did in class, this formula was derived from doing the area of the triangle stuff, and then we got to here. Okay, so it's not too big of a deal that we use this way anyway. It's actually probably a preferred way instead of memorizing it. But notice that these are both the same thing. Somewhere we multiplied by three, somewhere we took one half, okay, somewhere we doubled something, right, and all that just. So all of that's there. Let's go to the square. I'm gonna erase this one. Number 13, find the area of a square with a radius of eight millimeters, sounds good. Okay. Radius, now in this, center idea here. There are a lot of ways to do this problem actually. Um, one of the ways that I'd be looking at this problem is by extending this thing as like a diagonal all the way. Uh, I'll avoid that one, but that's one way you could look at it. No problem. Okay. So our radius here is eight millimeters. Um, the way I'm going to go about this is just the way we've been doing the other ones. It's eight millimeters, etc. Radii form to make a central angle. Okay, the central angle is 90 degrees. It's 360 over four, because there are four central angles. So one way we could go about this problem, actually, just for the sake of time, I'll, I'll do them differently. So I'll do this one differently here. One way I could go about this problem is I could find the area of the triangle right now. I don't need to do apothem. The whole idea behind area of triangle is you need to establish one base, the length of one of the sides. Okay, this is eight and this is eight. I could also say this is eight root two, by the way. Uh, and height has to be perpendicular to base. Well, we already know that this is a 90 degree angle. So if I chose this as the base, then I could choose this as the height, because that is eight. So the area of this triangle, 
right here is one half base times height. Half of 64 is 32. So 32 square millimeters is the area of one triangle. Four of them right here would be 128 area of the square. Just like that. Okay. So that's the area of your square. And there are many ways to do this kind of problem. Um, I just I want to offer multiple ways, but not within multiple problems. Okay, number 14 is a hexagon, regular hexagon with a radius of 7 centimeters. See how quickly I draw that? I don't think you can do that. There you go. Now, you'll notice this later over time, maybe through a lot of practice, but in a regular hexagon, the radius is the same as the length of any one side. Reason being, this is an isosceles triangle. Central angle is 60 degrees. Therefore, these also are 60 degrees, which makes it equal angular, which makes it equal equilateral. If these are 7, this is 7 down here. Another way to explore that, and we'll have to do it anyway, is let's go to that whole 60 degree central angle idea. 360 divided by 6. Let's draw the apothem. So it bisects the angle and this side down here. So this becomes 30, 60, 90. Now in a 30, 60, 90, the side opposite 30, the shortest side, is half the hypotenuse. If this is 7, this is 3.5 centimeters. And if this is 3.5, then this is 3.5 root 3 centimeters. So that was still important to get. Now keep in mind, when we got 3.5, you can double that length, you're going to get 7. So you still get 7 anyway. I was just giving you another shortcut. Maybe you're given the app. Well, that won't help. Okay, so area is one half AP. So one half air uh, apothem is three point five root three. Perimeter perimeter is not seven. Perimeter is seven. Let me write this. Seven times six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's forty two. Um, I think they said round to the nearest tenth. Okay. I don't know if I round to the nearest tenth for this one, so I do apologize for that because I think it had a root 3 in it. All right, so half of 3.5, then times 42, becomes 73.5. So here's an exact answer right there. 73.5 root 3 square centimeters. And then your final area, when you multiply by root 3, hang on one second. times square root of 3, 127.3 square centimeters. Sorry about the handwriting. So that's rounded to the nearest tenth for that area there. Okay, numbers 15, 16, and 17 have to do with ratio of sides, perimeters, and areas of similar figures. I'm going to break this down in a really quick way. The ratio of sides and the ratio of perimeters are the same. Because they're focused on the same dimension, they're focused on the same things. As they grow a certain amount, um, like if, if, if you're looking at two TV screens, okay, and the length of one of the TVs is double the other, then the length of one of the perimeters is also double the other. Now the ratio of area compared to the ratio of sides and perimeter you have to take the ratio of sides and square it to get the ratio of area. Okay, So if you have a TV screen, I did this in class, if you have a TV screen that's double another TV screen, say like that, okay, it takes four TV screens right here to fill up the area of the other one, even though the lengths are double. Now, the portion of this really has to do with the fact that these shapes are similar. Because you might say, well, yeah, well, what if, what if it's only double the length one way? Well, the problem is they're not similar anymore, right? They have to be similar for us to even be doing these similarity ratios, right? It's in the name, similarity ratio. To get the ratio of sides from the ratio of area, you have to take the square root of 
the ratio of area to make that happen. So there you go. Okay, so now that we have those down, let's go ahead and use them and apply them here. I have two figures or two quadrilaterals. Uh, they tell you they're similar off the bat. This angle angle idea will not tell you they're similar because it's a quadrilateral. You need a little more than that to know that. However, you do know what parts correspond and um, it appears it's going to be this one corresponding with this one here. So the similarity ratio, let's see, for each pair, find the ratio of area of the first figure to the area of the second. So the similarity ratio right now is 8 to 12 from the first to the second. That reduces to 2 thirds. Okay, the ratio of area, whoops, is 2 thirds quantity squared. Okay, which is 4 ninths. 2 squared over 3 squared gives you 4 ninths. Um, the idea behind this statement is this. Um, three of these make two of these, right? 8 times 3 is 24. 12, 12 times 2 is 24. Likewise, 9 of this area make 4 of this area. I don't know what the area is, but I know that statement. It takes 9 of the smaller one to make 4 of the bigger one. Just like here, the ratio of areas 1 to 4 it takes 4 small TVs to make 1 big TV. Even though the ratio of sides it takes the length of a small TV to, uh, you have to double it to make the size one. Okay, 16, you have two squares. They have to be similar. Um, this is from the first to second. Now, it's not from small to large. They did say from the first to second, so it's going to be 6 over 4, which reduces to 3 over 2. Okay. Someone might ask, do you have to reduce these fractions? Uh, yes. Um, even though they don't ask you for ratio of sides, maybe you go with this, then square the numbers, but you're going to have to reduce them then. Ratio of area is 3 over 2, quantity squared, which is 9 over 4. So it's the exact same as this one, only we're looking at way different figures. You have no idea how they're actually... Well, we do. This is 36. And here's one we can actually look at. This area is 36. This area is 16. So the ratio of areas is 36 over 16. Guess what? They both divide by 4. That becomes 9 over 4. So... Um, Oh, what was I going to say? Oh, the other difference is that the first figure in this case is bigger than this than in this case. So it's not always small to large. It does say from the first figure to the second. Uh, and first meaning the one, I guess, on the left. Okay, now we have equilateral triangles. And once again, something where you could actually find the area. I'm going to refrain. Um, the ratio of sides in this case is 3 to 6, which is 1 to 2 from first to second. So the ratio of area is one half squared, quantity squared, which is one fourth. So just like the TVs, whoops. So just like the TVs going from small to large, the ratio of sides is one half, one to two. The ratio of areas is one to four. It doesn't show up as easily in these triangles, but you could do it. Here's how you do it. Take this triangle here, place it in. One, two, three, four. Four of these triangles make one of the big ones. Just like we saw with the TVs. Okay, this problem has nothing to do with the TVs right here, so let me get these ones out of the way. Get this out of the way. Um, if the ratio of areas of two similar hexagons is 8 to 25, what is the ratio of their perimeters? Okay, um, it doesn't matter the fact they say two similar hexagons, they just have to be two similar shapes, any 2D shapes. Because um, the ratio of their perimeters is the same as the ratio of their sides. So the ratio of areas is 8 to 25. And I like to use the fraction. It's more mathy. So the ratio of sides is, and the, the ratio of perimeters, which is the same thing, it's going to be the square root of 8 over 25. Now, how square roots work here, if I take the square root of a fraction, I get to take the square root of the top, divide it by the square root of the bottom. So that becomes 2 root 2 over 5. And I guess that's it, 2 root 2 to 5. It's not a perfect, it's not a great thing to look at to tell you like, oh, so it's this much bigger. Yeah, this is kind of a little more difficult to talk about. But that's the answer. That's the ratio of perimeters of these two similar hexagons. Okay. 
Okay, uh, find the area of each polygon around your answer to the nearest tenth. Okay, so I'm going to speed up a little bit. It looks like this is going to take a while. A uh, regular decagon with radius of 5 feet. Now, I have the luxury of having a decagon here. You will not, very often, uh, be drawing a decagon. What I normally tend to do is just draw these bottom three guys right here. So maybe I'll do that with the... Eh, no, I won't. All right. Start at the center here. I'm going to draw my two radii, determine my central angle. Oh, my two radii, by the way, are five feet. And a decagon, by the way, is ten sides. <laughs> Pentagon, let's just write these. Pentagon is five sides. Hexagon is six. Quadrilateral is four. All right, so my radii are five feet each. Okay, here and here. Central angle, right here, is 360 divided by 10, which is 36 degrees. Okay, if the central angle is 36 degrees, the apothem that bisects that angle makes each of these 18 and eight, um, 18 and 18. Okay, uh, this one's not a special triangle. This one is not a 30, 60, 90, it's not a 45, 45, 90. It's an 18, 72, 90. Okay, so you can't use tr um, special triangle ratio relationships. You're going to have to use trigonometry this time to find your apothem and the unknown side length that I just tend to call x over here. Okay, I'm going to be using one half AP in the very end for this one, then a triangle for that. I don't know. We'll see what we do. Um, so the apothem is solved by using trig, by using this 18 and this 5. If I do the cosine of 18 degrees, Okay, that's going to give me the relationship A over 5. So A equals 5 times the cosine of 18 degrees. Okay. Uh, I'm going to leave that exact answer for now. Uh, in the end, okay, maybe I'll round. They do say round to the nearest tenth, but I got to do, do that at the end. I can't do that in the beginning. I don't even care what that side length is. Uh, to get this X right here, let's use sine of 18 degrees. Sine of 18 degrees is x over 5. So x equals 5 times the sine of 18. Now that x is just half of one length of one side. It's just right there. Okay, Two of them, 2x, in essence, the side length, would be 10 times the sine of 18 degrees. Okay, now there are 10 sides, all of length this. So the perimeter is 10 times this number. So it's 100 times the sine of 18 degrees. So now I have apothem and perimeter, and I'm good to go with my formula for my area here. A equals 1 half apothem perimeter. Okay. If you want to write an exact answer first, it's always good to do that. Uh, half of 100 is 50. 5 times 50 is 250. So you get 250 times the sine of 18 degrees times the cosine of 18 degrees. That's an exact, exact answer. Nothing like if you asked what's that number about, I'd have no idea. I don't even know if it's more than 250 or not. I want to figure that out. 250 times the sine of 18 times the cosine of 18. Uh, well, I, I should have known it was more than 250. I don't know what I was saying there. But anyway, it's 73.47. So about 73.5. Um, I was about to say degrees. Uh, square feet. And that's an approximation to the nearest tenth right there. That's number 19. Okay. I'm going to keep going here. I have to delete. I'll delete everything, though. Okay, number 20, pentagon, regular pentagon with an apothem of 8 centimeters. Here we go. Do a little more quickly now that we've practiced a couple. Okay, um, it will be helpful for me to still do those radii here for the central angle measure. Because that, that thing's important, right? This whole thing, 360 divided by 5 is 72 degrees. 
okay? Half of that right here is 36 degrees. Once again, not a special triangle. So let's go to work. Uh, now, I don't need the radius, but I do need this side right here. Let's call it x. Opposite of 36 is x, adjacent to 36 is 8. Let's use tangent. Tangent of 36 degrees is x over 8. So x equals 8 times the tangent of 36 degrees. Now that's the length of half of one side. The length of a full side is 2x. And in a pentagon, there are five sides. So the perimeter is 5 times 16 tangent of 36, which is 80 times the tangent of 36 degrees. Boom, boom. All right, so apothems 8, perimeter is this, area is 1 half, 8 times 80 tangent of 36 degrees. There you go. Um, well, I, I'm not done, just that's the setup. Uh, 4 times 80 is 320, so an exact answer is right here. All right, so your final final, 320. Tangent of 36 gives you 232, about 232.5 square centimeters. And that's for the area of the regular pentagon. I'm right there with that up. Okay, the regular hexagon with apothem 6 inches looks like. This right here. Once again, this whole radius idea. Central angle is 60 degrees, half of it is 30 degrees. I'm going to speed this up now. Right angle right here, you are looking at a 30, 60, 90 triangle, which means we can find this guy pretty quickly. If this is 6, this is going to be root 3 times less over here. So we have to divide 6 by root 3 to get this side length here. x is 6 over root 3. Now if you'd like to write this as a truly simplified radical, we have to multiply both top and bottom by root 3, which is multiplying by 1. 6 root 3 is right there, and on bottom is 3. 6 over 3 is 2, so this becomes 2 root 3 inches for the length of x. Okay, 2x is a whole side length, that's gonna be four root three inches. And the perimeter, therefore, is four times six, so 24 root three inches, like so. Okay, uh, that wasn't the answer, but we have the apothem right here, six. So area is one half, six, 24 root three. Half of six is, uh, let's do half of 24. Half of 24 is 12. 12 times six is 72. That's an exact answer. Rounded to the nearest tenth. Gives you 124.7 square inches. Approximately, of course. Boom, boom. Looks good. Okay, number 22, a regular quadrilateral with a radius of 2 meters. A regular quadrilateral is otherwise known as a square. So let's go ahead and draw a square. Uh, radius of 2 meters. So I did talk about that last time, extending your radius fully to a diagonal like this. So if the center yeah, is about like right here. If the center to one of the diagonal to one of the vertices is a radius, so if that's two meters right there, the whole thing is four meters. Now, what does all this have anything to do with anything? Well, this is a right angle in a square. These are congruent in a square. So that makes this an isosceles right triangle, which makes this 45, 45, 90. Also, if you didn't know, diagonals bisect the angles at their endpoints, and these are 90 degrees, makes them 45. So this is four meters way out here. So I can get the length of either of these sides. You can use Pythagorean theorem. 
x squared, is, x squared equals 4 squared. I also do happen to know in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, though, that these are exactly root 2 times smaller than the hypotenuse. So x is 4 over root 2, and to simplify that, that's 4 root 2 over 2, and 4 divided by 2 is 2, so it becomes 2 root 2. I feel like I'm saying 2 a lot. 2 root 2 meters, that's the length of every x, including this one right here. So the area of the square, now that I have the side lengths, I could just do base times height. So the area equals 2 root 2 times 2 root 2. Okay, 2 times 2 is 4, root 2 times root 2 is 2, 4 times 2 is 8. So you got 8 square meters as your total area for your square. That's number 22, regular quadrilateral. Okay, moving on. Find the area of each polygon. Round your answers to the nearest tenth. So, what we're going to do here is draw altitudes to a decided, you know, set. If I draw this altitude down right here, I can call that height. I can find the height of this by using some trig. I can say the sine of 45. equals in, in h over 15. So h equals 15 times the sine of 45. Okay, if that's the case right there, I have my base length of 19 and my height of 15 sine of 45. Now, I'm going to show you something. I, I'm going to do this problem two, two different ways just to kind of give you the idea of you can choose more than one thing. Um, but your area, therefore, is one half 19 times 15 sine of 45. For the sake of time, I'm just going to type out what it is instead of writing the exact answer. Rounding to the nearest tenth, half of 19, I know already is 9.5 times 15 sine of 45, and I was root 2 over 2, but I think it's easier for me to type sine of 45. Okay, it's 100.8 square centimeters. Now, what I'm about to do here is choose a different base. I don't think I did this yet. I mentioned you can choose any base, but I can choose 15 as my base now. I'm going to draw an altitude down, and I'm going to try and find this height. Now keep in mind, right here, that I can now choose this 19 here as the hypotenuse for this triangle, and this h is now a different h compared with this 15. So let's do this a second way, where we say sine of 45 in this case equals h over 19. Okay, opposite over hypotenuse. So h is 19 times the sine of 45. Okay, so now what's going to happen, your area is going to be 1 half base times height, 1 half, this time my base is going to be 15, and my height is going to be 19 sine of 45. Before I calculate the rest, what's different between these two things? Literally nothing. The only difference is the order in which these things are written. 15 and 19 are right here and right here instead of right there and right there. So you're still going to get the same answer of 100.8 square centimeters no matter which height you choose. So as long as you choose one that you know you can work with, that's cool. So on number 24, I'm going to be doing just that. I'm going to be choosing uh, an altitude to draw somewhere. and I'm going to use one of those other lengths to do that to make the rest happen. So if I draw an altitude right here, Okay, it splits apart that 13, so I don't really know by how much. So I'm going to go ahead and use this 15 with the hypotenuse with 65. I'll call this my height. Um, psh, sine of 65 degrees equals h over 15. So h equals 15 times the sine of 65. Whoops, 65. So your area is 1 half base times height. This time my base is 13, if I'm choosing my height as that. Okay, and the exact answer here, half of 13 is six and a half, times 15, sine of 65, I'm getting 88.4 square feet. Okay, 
a lot of these problems seem to be a little redundant. Like, I mean, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm teaching you more as I'm doing more of this. Okay, this little right triangle, tiny one, that's 78 degrees. This little right triangle here, I can use 78 here, my height here, and a hypotenuse of 12. Now keep in mind here, no matter what I did here, actually there, there are a couple other ways I could do this problem. I'm gonna try and do another one. If these are both 12, that makes this triangle isosceles. And if this is 78, that means if I draw an altitude even this way, I'd be bisecting not only the angle, but I'd also be bisecting these sides here. So I'm gonna get a little different for you on this problem. These are both the exact same triangles now. They're both congruent. Um, and any one of these 39 degrees. So let's go ahead and find, oh gosh, let's see, what would I need? I guess I need both of these. Maybe this is the bad way to do it. That's all right. Um, let's call this X and call this Y. Now, if this is Y, then this is also Y right here. Um, okay, so let's take the cosine of 39 degrees. And we'll get X over 12. So X is 12 times the cosine of 39 degrees. Now, if we do sine of 39 degrees, we'll get Y over 12. So Y equals 12 times the sine of 39 degrees. So that's this base right here. Now 2Y would be 24 times the sine of 39 degrees, like that. So if I wanna do one half base times height, I can do that now. And I know this was a long way to do it. I just thought it'd be different for this problem. One half, 24 times the sine of 39, times 12 times the cosine of 39. Okay, let's go straight into that. That's 144 times sine 39, cosine 39. And I'm getting 70.4, approximately, 70.4 square meters. Okay, man. Let's get into circles. Yes, finally. I, I'm not cheering for circles. I'm just like, this is taking a long time. Uh, my fault. Let's, let's do these quick. Uh, find the measure of angle APD. That's this one right here. Okay, um, so if this here is a diameter, that means its central angle here is 180 degrees. So that's 90 plus 60 plus that amount gives you 180. Okay, now also if this is 90, it looks like this will also be 90. So that's another way of thinking about it. So if this is 60, this is 30. Sounds good. Number 27, measure of arc AC. That's this part right here. Okay, the way that arc measures work is they are the same as the measure of their central angle right there. So whatever the central angle is, this arc measure has the same exact measure. It's 30 plus 90, so it's gonna be 120 degrees. If the, central's angle 120, if the central angle is 120, this is also 120 right there. Measure of arc ABD, that is this guy all the way around. This is called a major arc. It uses three letters, and it says it's gotta hit B before it gets to D, starting from A. So it's gonna be everything that's not this 30 degree guy right here. If measure of arc AD is 30 degrees, and a full circle is 360 degrees, and this is 360 minus 30, which is 330 degrees. Finally, measure of angle CPA. CPA looks to be this guy right here. Now we just talked about that this angle measure is the same exact as the arc measure. So it's also 120 degrees for the exact same reason that I just mentioned before. Same as this guy. Okay. All right, that was pretty quick. I have four more problems. Find the length of each arc shown in red. Leave your answer in terms of pi. So length of arc compared to measure of arc is the length of arc is a fraction of the circumference of the circle. And it's the exact same fraction that the central angle is at a 360. In other words, to, to kind of give it a pretty short way here, if this angle was 90 degrees instead, well 90 out of 360 is one quarter. So we would take exactly a quarter of the circumference and that's how you'd get your length. So how do you get circumference? Well, it's two times pi times r or diameter times pi. To get the diameter, you do two times your radius. 
Uh, so that's kind of how we're getting into that. Both the same thing. So the diameter in this case is 8 inches because it's 2 times 4. So your circumference is diameter times pi. It's 8 pi inches. Okay. If the circumference is 8 pi inches, then the arc is this fraction of 8 pi inches. Okay. That equals 11 out of 36. 11 times 8 is 88. 88 out of 36 reduces to, those both divide by 4, uh, 22 over 9 pi, 22 nines pi, oh, um, square inches, uh, inches, inches, circumference, okay, number 31, we have this length right here that we're trying to find. So what they give you is a central angle here of 120. That also means that this arc right here is 120 degrees. This segment here is a diameter because it goes through the middle. That makes this whole thing 180 degrees. That makes this 60 degrees. Therefore, this is also 60 degrees. So we're going to take 60 degrees out of 360 and we'll apply that to our See, see this is what I don't like. I don't know if this is radius Let's say the three is a radius and not diameter. It might be diameter, but I'm, I can't make an assumption. Um, and I don't have an answer sheet with me. So if the radius is three millimeters, and you know what? You know what? Let's call it the diameter. I, I feel like they like to do different problems, and I think they would shorten it up if they didn't say it. So the diameter is three millimeters. So the circumference is three pi millimeters. Okay. So we got to take whatever 60 out of 360 is to 3 pi. Okay, 60 out of 360 is 1 sixth. We're going to say, take 1 sixth of 3 pi, which is 3 pi over 6, which is 1 half pi, or pi over 2 um, millimeters. Okay, when you take pre-calc, you're going to be saying that pi over 2 a whole lot or 5 pi over 4, stuff like that. When you use radians instead of degrees, ooh la la. That sounds good. Okay, so, and, and to you that number is weird. You're like, what the heck is that number? Well, it's half of 3.14. So it's 1.57 something. Okay, two more problems. We're gonna find the area of these shaded regions and we'll round our answers to the nearest tenth. Okay, they're both sec uh, segments here. To find the area of a segment, you take the area of the sector and you subtract it from the area of the triangle. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of losing it, so I'm going to, I say I'm going to go quickly. We'll see. The area of the sector is the same as what we did for measure for the length of an arc. You take whatever fraction this guy is out of 360, and you apply that to the area, though, this time instead of circumference. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. Okay, um, so the area of this circle here, that was kind of cool, that A. The area of this right here is pi times 8 squared, which is 64 pi meters. It says round to the nearest tenth, by the way. Make sure I do that by the end. That's the area of the entire circle. The area of the sector is 90 over 3 60ths that amount. 90 over 360 is a quarter. So one quarter of 64 pi is, if I do the math right, 16 pi. Uh, by the way, this is supposed to be square meters. Uh, 16 pi square meters. That's the area of the sector. Now I need to get the area of this triangle right here. It's not actually going to be too bad because this is a radius and this is a radius. So these are both 8. Okay. And because I can choose this as base, I can choose that as height because it's perpendicular to it. So the area of the triangle is one half base times height. Half of 64 is 32. Okay, so the area of the segment total 
is the area of the sector minus the area of the triangle. The units are meters or square meters. So let's round this to the nearest tenth. 16 pi minus 32 gives you about 18.3 square meters. Good. I got to do one more. Okay, this one we got to find the area of this shaded region right here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to find the area of this sector. It's, it's, it's a semicircle. Okay, and then I'm going to subtract that triangle of 120 in there. And some people might ask what some of these little parts are, how we can find lengths and all that. So uh, let's begin with, and you know, and I'm looking at this thing. I, I guess this must be diameter. Six must be the diameter. So if that's six, then the radius, because I think that's how they're trying to trick you with the problem. The radius right here is three. So that means this is also radius right here, as is this. These are all radius, but this is three. Here's where your isosceles triangle is being in play. But let's first find the area of the semicircle by finding the area of the circle. So the area of the circle is pi r squared, which is 9 pi square centimeters. The area of the sector is exactly one half of that. And by sector, I mean the semicircle. So 180 over 360 times 9 pi. So one half of nine pi is nine pi over two square centimeters. Okay, that's the area of the sector. And again, the only reason why I might get, get this answer wrong is because the six might have been the radius and not three. Uh, otherwise, it's correct for all intents and purposes. Okay, now the area of this triangle right here, I, I assume they say this is 120 degrees. The difference between this problem and this, and this problem is that here I could have done one half base times height because these are perpendicular. These ones are not, so I can't do one half three times three. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw an apath, uh, not an apath, draw an altitude here in this isosceles triangle. All altitudes of isosceles triangles bisect both the angle right here and this side length over here. So this becomes 60, half of 120, and this becomes 30. So what I'm gonna do is redraw this right triangle right here, 30, 60, 90, okay? The hypotenuse looks to be three centimeters. So I need to find this length and this length here. Well, half of three is 1.5, and that goes right here. And 1.5 times root three is exactly that, 1.5 root three, opposite of 60. So where does everything fit? Well, this is 1.5 root three, and over here is 1.5. If this is 1.5 root 3, double that right here is 3 root 3. So the entire length right here of the base of the triangle is 3 root 3 centimeters. Okay? And like I said, this is 1.5 right there. So the area of the triangle is 1 half base of, what did I say it was? 1.5? Uh, 3 root 3 times height of 1.5. All this decimal talk is really making me think that the um, our initial thing was supposed to be six. I don't know though. 1.5 times three divided by two times three root three, or times root three, will give me an area of about, well, I, you know what, I'm gonna keep it exact actually to begin with. Let's do that first. Uh, 2.25 root three. Okay, so the area of the segment now, I'm gonna take my 2.25 root three, and I'm gonna subtract it from nine pi. Okay, so the area of the segment is nine pi over two minus 2.25 root three. So nine pi over two, this is the last problem, minus two point, I'm done, I'm checked out. I really am. This equals 10.24, about 10.24. So about 10.2 square centimeters. Now the only way this problem is wrong, like I said, is if the area was, uh, they were referring to the 
if the if the radius was six instead of the diameter. In which case, I bet if they if they do have the answers wrong, because I took half of it right here, that ratio of sides is two to one. Then I bet the actual other answer would be forty point eight square centimeters because it's got to be four times larger. But I'm gonna ignore that and keep that one. Okay, that's it. Uh, literally, I'm I'm done. That's it. <laughs> Fiend.